Hey everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here with another Cyber Insight live stream. We're continuing our series on how to build secure networks. And today we're going to be talking about one of the protocols which is most necessary in your environment and can cause so much damage if you either lose the ability to sync with it, have it misconfigured, or God forbid you didn't even think about implementing it at all. Um, and that is a network timing protocol or NTP. So let's hop over uh, into the checklist that we've been using as we've been going down uh, all of these different best practices. And we can kind of dig into this a little bit and uh, use that as a jumping off point for talking about some finer details. So as we move over into the checklist, um, as always, if you're finding this information useful, I do appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe. All that stuff helps uh, with the algorithm on YouTube and all that stuff to help uh, drive more views to my content. So uh, any help you can provide is obviously appreciated. So uh, let's take a look at this and uh, see, at least from the perspective of the STIG, what they're talking about. And as I mentioned, we can, you know, dive into a few other things here. So pretty much the gist of this control is making sure that not only are you using NTP in your environment, but that you have at least two NTP servers deployed in your environment. Um, and the way that the NTP servers work is they're kind of like different tiers. Uh, they call them stratum levels. Uh, zero is going to be the best or highest uh, form of the NTP servers. That's going to be something uh, that is going to be like the authoritative one. And normally that's going to be something like from a satellite or something like that. Uh, normally within environments, we're going to point to uh, external stratum one clocks. Um, one easy way to do this for free is pointing to NIST time servers. Um, and that's really, really straightforward. There are other uh, things that you can purchase uh, if you don't want to use that, if you want to have some type of uh, direct stratum zero or stratum one type of connection, you can go ahead and purchase different types of appliances to do that. But really easy, straightforward, free way is to point to uh, NIST and go about it that way. So the whole reason why you want to make sure that you have uh, more than one NTP server in your environment and also point it to more than one NTP server externally for your, your timing is because a lot of the different services in your environment actually rely on having the correct time uh, and not only having the correct time, but making sure that all of the devices within your environment are synced to the same time. Uh, there's a few different scenarios that you can think of, uh, really easy ones that wouldn't necessarily cause any type of operational impact but could give you a lot of headaches is you think about the fact that everything in your environment from a logging perspective uses timestamps. Well, if you're trying to troubleshoot or respond to some type of security incident and the different devices in your environment aren't all synced to the same time, then that's going to cause you quite a bit of headache. A larger issue um, that can actually cause operational issues is if you think about different types of services in your environment that actually rely on needing time. So Kerberos is a perfect example of this. Um, when you're talking about authorization and access type of things where the sessions that are being generated or the tickets or things like that actually require um, being on the you know same time between different devices and things start to drift certain ways, time drift, um, you can actually get into situations where the drift becomes so much between devices that these different services will actually stop working. I've seen it happen before. It's really nasty. Um, and it's a, honestly, it's a pain in the ass to get things synced back to uh, being all uh, on the right time synchronization with each other. So that's really the, the main reason why you want to make sure that you do that. You know, everybody talks about DNS being a really, really big issue when that goes down. And that is 100% correct. Um, but NTP, uh, can be right up there as far as causing issues in your environment. And if you aren't aware of that, you're going to be really scratching your head trying to figure out why different types of authentication and authorization stopped working if you end up getting this time drift. Um, also worth noting that NT uh, or DNS can actually affect this as well, especially if what you're pointing to for your external uh, NTP servers relies on DNS and DNS goes down, uh, then your NTP servers might not be able to actually 
know where it is that they're supposed to be pulling their authoritative timing from. So let's see if there's anything else here within the control that's kind of worth talking about. We kind of talked about the different stratum levels, wanting to have redundant NTP servers both internally and externally. And I think that as far as the control goes, um, hits on all those things. So let's hop over and take uh, a look at a few other things with this. So let's see, I'm gonna hop over into the web browser here. Um, first thing I will mention with this is if you are unfamiliar with NTP um, and you wanna actually get a little bit of hands-on experience with how to configure it, it's really, really straightforward. I actually have a lab video I did for this using Packet Tracer and configuring NTP between some Cisco devices and having stuff be able to point to that. So um, that's step number one if you wanted to actually get some hands-on stuff. Um, some other things to kind of talk about is kind of some best practices when it comes to using NTP in your environment. So we kind of, depending on the environment, how big it is, how many sites you have, you might end up you know, really building out a large and redundant uh, NTP architecture uh, to be able to support things to make sure that, you know, certain locations don't lose time sync and all that type of stuff. We're not necessarily going to go too deep into what that would actually look like because that actually can get really, um, I won't say intense, but there can be a lot to that if you're really trying to develop, let's say, a, a very tiered architecture within an organization. But for a very simple organization or a smaller, medium-sized business, really a couple uh, NTP servers internally, uh, pointed to some external NTP servers uh, should work perfectly fine. In fact, you can run NTP uh, as a service off of certain network devices. So your NTP uh, server would actually be like, let's say a firewall or a router or a switch or something like that. Um, one of the things that you might want to do with that is NTP authentication. And while that doesn't necessarily encrypt the NTP packets, what it is is it's a, uh, a secret I guess is what you would call it, or um, you know, a string of numbers is really what it is. And it actually creates a cryptographically signs the packet, I guess would be the, the best way to describe it, so that your NTP client is able to verify that the timing that it's pulling down from the NTP server is actually the, um, the correct, or I should say is actually being pulled down from a device that's authorized to be the NTP server. So you... You don't have to worry about maybe uh, someone trying to sneak in some bad NTP packets. That cryptographic signature is going to help validate that. Um, another best practice that you might want to do is uh, make sure that you pick the same time uh, or time zone, I should say, uh, that you want to use across your entire organization. That might be, you know, really simple. You're just like, we only have one office, one East Coast. That's cool. Well, if you actually have multiple locations in different time zones, the best case to go with that is use UTC and just standardize everything, you know, across your environment makes it really straightforward and easy. And once you do it, you won't look back. <laughs> um, some other things that you're going to want to do from best practice perspective is access control for your NTP services. So we've kind of talked about this um, before in the past as far as network services that are either open to the Internet or uh, even within your environment and making sure you have access controls on those. NTP is one of those protocols or services that uh, can be easily exploitable and used in different types of uh, distributed denial service attacks. So uh, NTP monolist was a thing that came up a while ago uh, that could cause some issues. It's very easy to take care of, especially uh, in most of the newer Cisco stuff, there's actually just a command you can enter that will uh, prevent that from being able to happen and have the device end up being used kind of in a uh, DDoS attack. But short of that, what you would really want to do to limit that is if you just apply an ACL for NTP on whatever the interface is or the IP address that's being used for the NTP service, then you can make sure that you only have devices connecting to that for NTP that you want to, whether that's going to be communication with the upstream authoritative NTP servers that might be out on the internet, or from the perspective of allowing uh, clients within your environment to point to your NTP server, which might be on, like I said, your firewall, your router, your switch, or if you are actually hosting it on an appliance or device, again, you'd want to have 
ACLs attached to that to limit what can actually um, pull your NTP server. Um, I'm trying to think there's something else with that. I think I didn't mention before, but just general information, NTP uh, uses UDP uh, 123. So it isn't uh, a connection oriented protocol. Um, it's connectionless, just something to keep in mind um, when using it. I'm trying to think anything else that kind of, uh, kind of goes over that. Um, two servers at a minimum within the environment. Um, the more servers that you have, the better fidelity you're gonna get on the time. So that's something to think about as well. But like I said, if you're a small organization that might not necessarily be needed, you definitely wanna have two though um, in the event that some type of service disruption happens and you don't end up uh, you know, taking down a whole bunch of different services within your environment because you lose time sync. Uh, let's see, does anybody have any questions on NTP or uh, any of the stuff that I mentioned uh, today? If nobody does, then uh, then we can go ahead and wrap this one up. I'm trying to think what the next the next topic is going to be. It might be IDP stuff, but I'm not sure. I'll have to double check. Um, tomorrow is Wednesday, so I think that actually isn't going to be one of these chats for the uh, how to build secure networks. I think I'm going to do another uh, try hack me pen test plus walk through lab. Um, probably do the one dealing with um, enumerating and attacking, what was it? I think it was some network services. So I think it was like SMB, Telnet and FTP, I think. So uh, if you're interested in that, then come back and check that out tomorrow. So if nobody has anything else, then I appreciate you dropping in. Make sure you hit the like button again. As always, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we will chat later. All right, bye.